Nice to see you ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dustin Cormier. Welcome to How to Rock Astrology. Today we are going to be continuing our reading of the divine forces of the lunar nakshatras as portrayed in the Vedas by an author named Radha. She is a sidereal based Rashi astrologer but her derivations of the nakshatras are rooted in the Vedas. And that's why, even though I'm a tropical-based, uh, tropical Rashi-based Vedic astrologer, uh, of course, the wisdom that she talks about here is still useful. We just have to, this is the nature of being discerning with the, where we get our knowledge from. Doesn't mean that, you know, the knowledge coming from the Vedas is no good. Just with an author like this, who is not necessarily in the same camp as you, if you're following my camp, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You, know, you don't want to throw the works of an author like this out. We have to read it and discern for ourselves uh, the preciousness of the fruit. Now, without further ado, today we're talking about, in particular... The Nakshatra Devatas as the divine forces of the Rig Veda. We're going to categorize what nakshatras are considered which of the three classifications of Devatas that we find in the classic Rig Veda literature. We learned in our last episode that the main three uh, derivations actually relate to the three primary gods of the Hindu trinity. Vishnu, the sustainer, relates with uh, the Adityas, which are the maintainers of law and order. Shiva, the destroyer, relates with, relates with the Rudras, the atmospheric forces of destruction. And the Vasus relates to the, the Vasus, which are the worldly manifestors. They relate to Brahma, the creator. So, these three classifications are nestled into the, inherently into the consciousness and the interactions of the nakshatras, and this is an important derivation that we're going to talk about today. So, the nakshatra devatas as the divine forces of the Rig Veda. We're going to start with a quote from the Satipata Brahmana. May we partake of the bounty of the Vasus, of the wide sway of the Rudras. May we be beloved by the Adityas for the sake of security from injury, free from obstruction. These, to wit, the Vasus, Rudras, and Adityas, namely, are three classes of gods. May we enjoy their production, he thereby says. It's from the Satipata Brahmana, chapter 1, section 5, verse 17. And with that, <coughs> Radha begins our introduction of this chapter. The 33 divine forces are the foremost gods of India's most ancient past. This is evidenced by their worship and adornment in the hymns of the Rig Veda the earliest of the four Samhitas. Here, they are acclaimed as the 33 cosmic powers of the universe and sovereign rulers of the heavenly, the Adityas, the atmospheric, the Rudras, and the terrestrial, the Vasus, realms. Their category enumeration and remaining two members are first revealed in the Aitareya Brahmana and the Tatariya Samhita. Quote, For there are 33 gods, i.e., the eight Vasus, eleven Rudras, twelve Adityas, Prajalpati, and Vasatkara, or Prahaspati. And that's from the Aitareya Brahmana, chapter 1, section 1, verse 10. Over three millenniums later, the 33 divine forces reemerge in the Puranas and Itihasas. That their Vedic representation remains under unaltered underscores their eternal and holy nature. In the Puranas, the Adityas, Rudras, and Vasus 
are further distinguished as the ruling patriarchs of the current Manvantara, as we learned in the last chapter, along with Manu Vaivasvata, his nine sons, and the Saptarishis, the seven sages. As illustrated in this chapter, the post-Vedic literature provides for the first time a comprehensive listing of the individual names of the category gods. Such records provide the missing link between the nakshatra devatas and the divine forces of the Rig Veda. Uh, Radha notes in a footnote that the Vedic scriptures offer sundry listings of the category gods. However, to the knowledge of the author, no single text provides a comprehensive listing. She also notes in another footnote note here, it's important to note that the Puranic origin of several of the divine forces differs from their Vedic origin. All variations are fully discussed in the applicable, uh, the applicable Devata chapter, in the, in the individual nakshatra chapters. At last, the cosmic order behind a seemingly random assemblage of nakshatra devatas is readily apparent. <clears throat> so, Radha, the author, continues by first talking about Aditi and the twelve Adityas. First category gods belonging to the divine forces are the Adityas relating to Vishnu the sustainer. The Vishnu Purana asserts that the Tushitas, a class of celestial beings, reincarnated in the womb of Aditi as the Adityas during the current Manvatara. Importantly, uh, the Vishnu Purana provides the appellations of the twelve Adityas. Their nakshatras are noted in parentheses below here. <clears throat> and this quote comes from the Vishnu Purana, Book 1, Chapter 15. There were twelve celebrated deities in a former Manvantara called tu Tuakas, or Tushitas, who, upon the approach of the present period, or in the reign of the last Manu Kakshusha, assembled and said to one another, Come, let us quickly enter into the womb of Aditi Punarvasu, that we may be born in the next Manvantara, for thereby we shall again enjoy the rank of gods. And accordingly, they were born the sons of Kashyapa, the son of Marichi by Aditi, the daughter of Daksha, thence named the twelve Adityas, whose appellations were, respectively, and again, this is, <clears throat> you know, little bits of history as to the birth of the Adityas uh, Ad through Aditi. <clears throat> the twelve Adityas are thus called, respectively, Vishnu, or Shravana, Chakra, or Jesta, Aryaman, who rules Purva Vafalguni, Dhuti, or uh, known as Dhatri in the Rig Veda, who uh, is just one of the, another one of the gods, uh, or one of the Adityas. <clears throat> then we have Tvastri, which rules Chitra, Pushan, which rules Revati, Vivashvat, father to the Ashvani Kumaras and Yama which are ruling devatas of Ashvani and Parani, respectively. Savita, which rules Hasta. Mitra, which rules Anuradha. Varuna, which rules Shatapichag. Amsha, another one of the gods, or one of the Adityas. And Bhaga, which rules Uttara Falguni. These, who in the Kakshusha Manvantara were the gods called the Tushitas, 
These were called the twelve Adityas in the Manvantara, the present Manvantara of Vaishvashvata. <clears throat> and that comes from the Vishnu Purana, Book 1, Chapter 15. In accordance with the above passage, nine of the twelve Adityas and their mother are ruling Nakshatra Devatas. Aditya Vivashvat is represented by his sons Yama and the Ashwani Kumaras. So that's Yama, which rules Parani, and the Ashwanis, which are the deities of the Ashwani Nakshatra. Now here we have table two, the Adityas as Nakshatra Devatas. Ati, Aditi as the mother, which translates as boundless, rules the Nakshatra Punarvasu. Aryaman, which translates as companion, uh, is the lord of Pur Purva Falgani. Makes sense when we understand Aryaman is the companion, the husband factor in, in the Falgunis. Pagha is the feminine equivalent of Aryaman, uh, the other side of the, of the Falgunis, whose translation is wealth or enjoyment. Then we have Mitra, whose translation is friend, and who rules the nakshatra of Anuradha. It's interesting when we know the nature of the Anuradha. It's a very friendship-oriented nakshatra, uh, learning the essence of love, what re love really means. Pushan uh, relates to, translates to nourisher, which makes sense to the nakshatra of Revati. Indra, or Chakra, is the Aditya, whose translation is chief, relating to the nakshatra Jesta. Jesta translates as elder or elder sister. It is a very important character in the, in the uh, narrative of the Devatas and the Vedas, particularly in the Puranic literature, I believe. Savitri, which translates as the impeller, is the lord of the nakshatra Hasta. Tvastri, that translates as heavenly builder, is the lord of the nakshatra Chitra. Vishnu or Vamana, translates as all pervading, is the lord of the nakshatra Shravana. Varuna, which translates as water, uh, it's one of the many translations of water, is the lord of Shatapishak. And then the Aditya Vishvavat uh, is considered to be one and the same of the Lord of the Ashvini Kumaras. Uh, well, the Ashvini Kumaras and Yama are in a way considered to be the same Devata. The Ashvinis translates as twin horsemen. The Ashvini Kumaras is twin horsemen. That's, of course, the Lord of the Nakshatra Ashvini. And Yama translates as restraint, including one of, uh, for example, we know Yama uh, is featured in Raja Yoga as one of the uh, the Yamas, the restraints, uh, the detachments on the path of yoga. Uh, 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 Yama is the god which lords over Parani. And all of these are considered as Adityas. Of the Adityas, Indra, ruler of Jesta, the elder or foremost, is firstborn, while Vamana, the dwarf or the smallest, is the ruler of Shravana and is the lastborn. O king, the sons of Aditi are twelve, with Indra heading them all, and the youngest of them all was Vishnu, Vamana, upon whom the, Lord, the worlds depend. That little quote comes from the Mahabharata of Krishna Dwaipanyana. Va <coughs> Sorry. It's from the Mahabharata of Krishna Dwaipanyana Vyasa. It's from Book 1, Section 116. <coughs> So that was from the Mahabharata. Now, next we're going to look at Rudra and the 11 Rudras. 
The Puranas contain varying accounts of the birth of Rudra and the eleven Rudras. In the Vishnu Purana, Brahma, agitated from the failure of his sons to procreate, births Rudra from his angry brow. In turn, Rudra divides his body into a female and male half, and then further divides each half into eleven parts, which become the eleven Rudras, or males, and Rudranis, or females. The Rudras, frightening in appearance and of great strength and exploit, protect the gods by abolishing the Asuras, the demons. They are identified by name in the following Mahabharata passage. Quote, it is known that the spiritual sons or mind-born sons of Brahman were the six great rishis. There was another of the name of Sthanu, holder of the spear, i.e. Rudra. And the sons of this Sthanu, gifted with great energy, were, it is known, eleven. There were Mrigavyada, piercer of the deer, Sarpa, the serpent, and Nirti, destruction of great fame, Ajaikapat, or Ajika Ikabad, unborn one-footed, that's an old uh, idea of the 28th nakshatra aphorism. Ahibradhana, or Ahirbhujnyaya, cloud serpent, and Pinaki, armed with bow or spear. It's, these are the oppressors of foes. <coughs> Dahana, <coughs> so uh, Dahana is another Rudra, it's the destroyer. Ishvara, supreme lord. And Kapali, beggar's bowl made from a human skull. And these are the Rudras of great splendor. And then finally, there's also Sthanu, the Rudra itself, and Parga, Radiance, the illustrious. These are called the eleven Rudras. And this is, that was from the Mahabharata. So essentially, Rudra and his sons are the devatas of the following five nakshatras. Rudra of the Rudras uh, translates to Howler or Rora, Roarer, and Rudra rules over Ardra. Aja Ikapad, which I could be, I thought that this was correlated with the 28th Nakshatra. I'm now not sure about that, so maybe I should just keep my own ideas to myself. I just thought that the word was related to it. But it feels like I'm wrong now because here, the Rudra Aja Ikapad, which translates as the unborn one footed, is the lord of Purva Bhadrapada. Both the Padrapadras are lorded by Rudras. Uh, Uttara Bhadrapada is lorded by Ahir Budnaya, which is the serpent of the cloud. Nirti which translates as destruction, is the lord of the nakshatra of Mula, and Sarpas, which translates to serpents. The Sarpas, the Naga powers, are the rulers of the nakshatra of Ashlesha. <clears throat> so all of these nakshatras have the power which we derive from the derivation of Rudra and the destructive tendencies of Shiva. <sighs> now finally, the last derivation is Agni and the eight Vasus, the Vasu Devas. The eight Vasus are energetic light beings and the Puranic sons of Dharma, the mind-born son of Brahma and his wife, Vasu. They are the great elements, the Mahabhutas, of air, fire, water, and earth, along with the sun, moon, the Dhruva, pole star, and the fixed stars, the nakshatras. Uh, so here we have a quote from the Vishnu Purana, 
Book 1, Chapter 15. The deities called Vasus because preceded by fire, i.e. Anala or Agni, is the first Vasu. They abound in splendor and might and are severally named Apa or water, Dhruva, the pole star, Soma, the moon, Thara, earth, Anila, wind, Anala, fire, Pratyusha, which is the sun at daybreak, and Prabhasha, the splendor of light, i.e. the nakshatras. Now, of the Vasus, the Srimad Bhagavatam, a very beloved book and important book, which is the final essence of Mahabharata and the, even a further defined essence of the Bhagavad Gita, in my opinion. I get all of my knowledge about that from Vic Dikara and his awesome lessons on the Vedic knowledge and epistemology. The Srimad Bhagavatam singles out Agni as supreme amongst the Vasus. Vishnu holds equivalent rank amongst the Adityas and Rudra amongst the Rudras <clears throat> and Indra of the demigods. Among the demigods, I, the Supreme Personality Godhead, am Indra, and among the Vasus, I am Agni, the god of fire. I am Vishnu among the sons of Aditi, and among the Rudras, I am Rudra. So that's from Srimad Bhagavatam by Krishna Dwaipayana Vyasa, Canto 11, Chapter 16. Vyasa is the personification of the divine illumination of Krishna. That's what that little, Krish that's what that little thing means there. Now, Agni and Aditya Indra are co-rulers of Vishaka Nakshatra. Including Indra Agni, the Vasus rule the following six nakshatras. We see that the Vasus collectively, which translates as the rays of light, uh, are the consist of the lordship of Dhanishta, Nakshatra. Then the Vasu Anala, which translates as fire, is of course the Nakshatra Lord, uh, the Lord of the Nakshatra Kritika. Hap Apa, which translates as water, is the Lord of the Nakshatra Purva Ashada. Anila, which translates as wind, is the Lord of the Nakshatra Svati. The Vasu Soma, which translates as the moon, is the lord of the nakshatra Mrigashirsha, Mrigashira. And the Vasu Indra Agni, which is an Aditya and a Vasu, respectively, uh, that's what it translates as. Indra being the Aditya and Agni being the Vasu. These uh, uh, together are the lord represent the lordship of the nakshatra Vishaka. So you can see that the nakshatras really are an interweaving of all of these gods in some ways. Finally, the last two gods that we describe are Prajalpati and Brihaspati. The 32nd and 33rd members of the divine forces are Prajalpati, and Vashatkara, recall that Prajalpati, or Rohini, is the creative force of the universe, and Vashatkara is Brahaspati, which rules Pushya. Now there's another member to consider, another derivation or class to be considered uh, in the rulership of the nakshatras, and this is a class called the Pitris, or ancestors related most specifically to the nakshatra Magha. Including the Vishva Devas. <coughs> the, uh, so, yeah. With the inclusion of the Vishva Devas, which collectively rule Uttara Ashada, 
who re collectively represent the 33 divine forces. All 27 nakshatra devatas are accounted for, excepting the pitris, which rule magha. So basically, you know, uh, Vishva devas means all of the 33 devatas. And Uttara Ashada, Uttara Ashada is lorded over collectively by all of the nakshatras, uh, by all of the devatas, rather. And so these have all been covered except for the Pitris, which rules the nakshatra Magha. Now let's recall that the Sapta Rishis and Manu Vaishvata, Vaivashvata, sorry, recall that the Sapta Rishis, the seven sages, and Manu Vaishvasvata are included as sovereign rulers of the current Manvantara. They're also considered the great ancestors of mankind. Manu Vaivashvata is the son of Aditya Vivashvat Martanda and is uniquely credited with commencing a lineage that serves as the ancestral root for all human beings. This is more like Indian the Indian Hindu Vedic brand of the sort of genealogy that we see in the genesis of the Christian Bible. Lots of names and names and names. Um, some of it is important and gives credence to the relevant classifications of the nakshatras, and that's why I'm including them here. <clears throat> and uh, now this comes from a quote from the Mahabharata. Uh, book 1, section... 125. And of Vishvavat was born the Lord Yama, and Martanda, Visvavat, Visvavat, also begat another son after Yama, gifted with great intelligence and named Manu. And Manu was endued with great wisdom and devoted to virtue, and he became the progenitor of a line. And in Manu's race have been born all human beings. All of us humans are born from this Manu character, who have therefore been called Manavas, or human beings. And it is of Manu that all men, including Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and others, have been descended, and are, therefore, all called Manavas, which is interestingly possibly where we derive our word man from. Very cool. As with Yama and the Ashvins, that, so that's the end of that quote. <clears throat> now, as with Yama and the Ashvins, Ashvinis, also offspring of Aditya Vishvavat, Manu Vaivashvata is a third generation Aditya. He, along with the Saptarishis, considered the spiritual ancestors of man, are the Pitris and the ruling Devatas, of Magha. This is kind of like the ancient connection to our earthbound root, which is also shared with our celestial root. Some very interesting ancestral like DNA code bearers uh, being referenced here in this uh, section, describing what exactly it means that the Petris are our ancestors which lord over the nakshatra Magha. So all in all, we have a full table of the given forces of the nakshatras, and here is that table. Feel free to pause, feel free to study it, feel free to screenshot it, uh, just to give you the sense of the root guts of these nakshatras and their classical classifications and derivations so i hope you guys enjoyed that P feel free to join me in the next episode where we are going to talk about the evolution of the nakshatras throughout the uh the vedas eventually ending in their commentaries and stories of the puranic vader uh, the puranic literature which is of course sourced in the originating Vedic literature. So I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. I hope you guys are enjoying this cool roots of the nakshatras. 
if you are, feel free to subscribe, like, let me, let me know uh, in the comments if you're digging it. Feel free to give all the comments you like because we need more people talking about the, this roots of the nakshatras in today's time. I'm Dustin Cormier. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.